Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can wait for several async functions to complete before doing something else, whether they are callback based or promise based or a mix of the two. So here I want to wait for two callback functions and also a fetch function that returns a promise. So the modern approach for this is to make each process return a promise if it isn't already and then use methods on the promise object to wait for all of the promises so you have two options promise to all it will wait for all of the promises if one fails it will reject immediately and you can handle the error as soon as possible however if you want to be a bit softer on the errors you can use promise all settled which will wait until all promises are complete successful or not and then return the results to you in an object so let's first wait with promise.all it accepts an array of promises so let's make sure that each process returns a promise that we can pass into promise.all so for a callback function we want to wrap it in a promise using the result parameter to signal when the callback is firing and the process is complete. So in this case, I call resolve after the event has fired. So when you call resolve, what happens is the status of the promise turns from pending to resolved. So I want to store a reference to this promise and place it in the promise.all array. Now I want to make set timeout also return a promise. So I can do that in the same way, embedding set timeout in a new promise. And what I'm going to do this time is to return a value that will be available to me after waiting for all of the promises. So I'll store a reference to the timeout that now returns a promise. Now the final process that we want to wait for is a fetch request. So fetch, it returns a promise. So we don't need to create a new promise. We just need a reference to the one that fetch already creates for us. And instead of logging to the console inside the fetch function, we now want the return value of each of these functions to be either the data or the error, which is going to end up being the resolve or reject value of the promise. Now, once you've finished waiting for all of your promises, promise.all is going to return a promise that contains the resolve values of all of the promises that you've been waiting for. And to make this process a bit more transparent, I'll log the value of each of the promises to the console before waiting with promise.all. So let's see the result of running this code now. So the initial status of each promise is pending and it's a change to the resolve status that triggers promise.all to return its results. And if I now take a look at the values of each of those promises, we see that their status is now fulfilled and we're getting back the expected values in this case, so undefined for the first one because we didn't pass any value into resolve for the window.load event. We did pass a value in for the timeout and we get the result of the fetch request for the third value. Now, as mentioned earlier, if you're waiting for promises with promise.all, then it has a fail fast behavior. So if one promise fails, then it's just going to immediately return that error to you 
and you won't get the results back of any of the other promises. So I could do that by throwing an error inside the catch statement or the fetch. This would cause the promise to reject. If I wanted a promise that I've created, then instead of calling the first parameter, call the second one before the first is called, usually in response to something that's going on within the function. Here, yeah, I'm just responding to a condition. That's always true, just to make sure that reject is called before resolve. So if we run this code now, we get the first reject value of the first promise to fail, which is in this case, the timeout. And because it failed, we don't get the value of any other promise back. But if we change the method that we're using to wait for the promises to all settled, we now get back all results. We could query the status property to see whether a particular promise was successful and handle it appropriately. Now, a small tip to finish on. If you're waiting, like I am here, for the load event, it's a good idea to check first whether the event has already occurred, because if it has, then you'll be waiting for the promise to resolve forever because the load event will not occur again. So, to check if it's already occurred, you can check the value of ready state. If it's complete, then the load event has already fired. So in this context, you'd want to resolve immediately. And if it hasn't already occurred, then add the event listener and resolve when the callback function runs. Okay, so I'll just run it one more time to check that it's still working. So that is it for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and others to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.